Thank you for tuning in to video number two of my campaign blog. Today is Monday, April 16th, 2012. I apologize for the delay in uploading this video, but I've been experiencing technical difficulties with my computer. Please forgive me as I fumble through my notes. Um, I have several things I'd like to share with you and I don't want to leave anything out. First of all, I'd like to re read an endorsement letter to you. Dear Brandy, each year, Teamsters Local Union 89 endorses candidates for election. The decision to support a candidate is not an easy task or taken lightly. Each Teamster endorsed candidate must possess a great deal of integrity and character. It gives me great pleasure to inform you that you have demonstrated that you are deserving of the Teamster endorsement. You have proven over the years to be a hardworking individual with integrity, character, and intuition. Furthermore, I know you will devote yourself to protecting the livelihoods and communities for our Teamster families and all working families in the state of Kentucky. The Executive Board of Teamsters Local 89 has unanimously voted to endorse your candidacy. Thank you so much to the Teamsters. I am honored to have you behind me. A lot of things have been going on over the last couple of weeks, and initially I was going to address these things individually, but I have decided not to do so. I would just like to remind my supporters uh, that we're on the high road and uh, we must continue to stand up for what we believe in, uh, yet conduct ourselves in a respectful manner. Uh, my faithful supporters and your good attitudes are a great reflection of my campaign and my mission to do things the right way. As I have said from the beginning, if I cannot win this the right way, then I don't want it. And anyone who does it the wrong way doesn't deserve it. As I previously emphasized, uh, the concern about state guidelines not being followed. There are more violations that continue to pile up uh, in light of the election. According to Section 2 of the Administrative Office of the Court's Personnel Policies regarding Court of Justice property and resources and political activities, just further proof that there is no regard for rules and regulations. I have spoken to several residents who are confused about the difference between the county clerk and the circuit clerk, and I would just like to clear that up for you. Our county clerk's office is located in the old courthouse on East 10th Street. Some of the things that they handle in that office are titling and registration of motor vehicles, recording deeds and mortgages, marriage licenses, payment of personal property tax, voter registration, conducting elections, and maintaining and preserving records for future generations. The Circuit Court Clerk's Office is located in the Justice Center on Center Street, and other than driver's license, we handle all court matters, such as traffic violations, felonies, misdemeanors, small claims, civil lawsuits, evictions, probate, mental health matters, criminal cases, divorces, juvenile matters, and domestic violence cases. The duties and responsibilities of the circuit court clerk are very complex. That's why it's important that we ensure that the right person is in this office handling these matters as effectively and efficiently as possible. I'd also like to remind you that if you're not registered to vote, you do this in the county clerk's office um, or you can visit elect.ky.gov and get registered to vote. Uh, but the deadline to do this is April 23rd, 2012. I believe that the deputy clerks in this office are the ones who have kept it up and going for a very long time. These hardworking individuals deserve a break. There's no cross-training program in this office, which means that several people are doing a job that no one else is trained to do, making it hard for them to have time off. Other deputies are doing the job of two to three people due to the turnover rate keeping the office understaffed. Additionally, these employees are only allowed to vacation during certain months of the year or take certain days off during the week. As the clerk, I'm not only going to ensure that state guidelines are followed and that this office is run properly, but I'm also going to create better working conditions for the staff, create a cross-training program, allow vacations during every month of the year, allow reasonable time off, and I have some ideas in offering higher education opportunities as well. These deputies have recently been advised that due to the state's budget, they will not be receiving a raise. Whatever these deputies are undercompensated for, I intend to overcompensate them with appreciation and a great place to work. With me as the clerk, I guarantee that the morale will go up and the employee turnover rate will go down. I keep using the word change and I realize that a lot of people are afraid of change, 
but this office lacks so much because there has been no change for so long. We need progress, and progress is impossible without change. I ask you to join me on May 22nd in bringing this change to Warren County. Thank you. First of all, I would like to share an endorsement letter with you. Dear Brandy, each year Teamsters Local Union 89 endorses candidates for election. The decision to support a candidate is not an easy task or taken lightly. Each Teamster endorsed candidate must possess a great deal of integrity and character. Do you hear the train? <laughs> oh.